A very good evening to all of you. I feel truly honored to speak to such a wonderful audience today. TEDx believes ideas change lives. In the late 1960s, a great visionary, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, had a noble idea. He wanted space to be useful to the common man of India. He didn't stop at that mere thought. He built all the infrastructure, pulled in all the human resources, set all the systems in place. And you see, decades down the line, today, India is at par with the advanced spacefaring nations. Thanks to his efforts, we have ISRO today. Ideas work. Space has always been fascinating to me. The love of working for my country is a great honor. What could be better than the opportunity to work for a great organization like ISRO? ISRO is the National Space Agency of India. Founded in 1969, it builds rockets and satellites, offers launch services. It does extensive space application programs including space research. It has done great missions like Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan, which have been first time successful missions in the entire world. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. ISRO has done 214 missions so far. It has put 345 foreign satellites from 34 countries in the orbit. The space application from ISRO in such areas like healthcare, agriculture, weather forecasting, resource monitoring, telemedicine, e-governance, TV broadcasting, telecommunication, the list is endless. The societal returns for the ISRO's programs are enormous. So this gives so much pride to all of us as Indians. I am from a teacher's family. Both my parents were teachers. My father was a headmaster in a boys' high secondary school. My mother worked in girls' school. She taught mathematics. And my humble academic journey started at Edward School at Satur a small town in South Tamil Nadu. When I was growing through grades 6, 7, 8, 9, sometime I thought I wasn't growing taller. So I thought I should compensate some, somehow. So what did I do? I took gold medals in grade 10, gold in grade 12, I took 200 on 200 on mathematics in grade 12. This took me to College of Engineering, Gindi, Chennai, one of the most prestigious engineering colleges in the country with 200-year-old legacy. I did not have any predefined plan to join ISRO. But as they say, good friends make great things. I actually uh, was going through engineering, and at some point in time, nowadays we see, as Indians, we take a lot of pride in ISRO's successful missions, like uh, spacecraft missions, launch vehicle missions, uh, re-entry missions, and uh, launching foreign satellites, and so on. But those days, the launch rates were very less, and ISRO was not known to many. When I was in the final year, a batchmate of mine and a close friend, Ramesh, applied for ISRO. He suggested that I too apply because I had good academic track record. I listened to him. In the ISRO interview, I was surprised to see 
a foreigner looking person uh, chairing the committee and asking me what's your favorite subject i said i don't have any reservation sir he said no we would like to know where you will fit in in our organization i apparently did well and i got selected and i came to know it was mr nambinarayanan and later i had the chance to work with him from 1990 to 1993 for 3 years rocket engines are huge or like huge power houses they are like big dams or power plants in small sizes a rocket engine can generate power that is equivalent to 14 locomotives together or even they can lift 100 african elephants at one go a small turbo pump of a car engine size can generate power that is equivalent to the kaplan turbine in the hirakud dam in odisha that's the power of rockets that is why they are complex and cryogenic rockets are even more special because they produce more thrust with lesser propellants and they make compact upper stages i joined this row in 1987 and straight away joined cryogenic group the technically emerging group at that area at that time i initially worked with cryo materials and because i was active i was immediately moved to cryogenic project in 1990 to work with mr nambi and uh, do i have worked in project management production management engine and stage realization quality control and systems reliability the my association with the cryo rocket engine development is one of the most defining moments in my career cryogenics is low temperature physics cryo rockets use low temperature propellants they are very cool but they are very powerful the the complexities are with respect to materials high heat flux management rotor dynamics insulation and so on india or isro has got two cryogenic engines one with the russian design which was improved and realized in india and another one three times more powerful which is totally on a home grown technology in the late 1980s and early 90s we were doing experiments with gaseous hydrogen and gaseous oxygen and then liquid oxygen and gaseous hydrogen we developed small engines tested them and then we scaled up and the initial testings were going on processing cryo technology for any country gives a technological edge in rocketry that is the time the russian offer came and the founder director of our liquid propulsion center mutra ahem sir who can be considered as the father of liquid propulsion in india he signed contracts with russians and there was a selection process nambi sir proposed me because i was working with him at that time a group of engineers young and old were selected and placed in russia in 1993 with the leadership of nyana gandhi sir i was placed in the production center which was far away from moscow the stay at russia amidst hostile weather temperature dropping to minus 40 degrees and familiar food and known language were really challenging times but the team was very dedicated and well led and i really learned the way the russians approached the manufacturing of the rocket engines they had robust systems their designs had good margin they were very good in welding metallurgy and the interesting point to uh, note is that they were experts in a particular field where they had profound knowledge experience and expertise i learned their manufacturing methodology quality technology and the documentation everything was really good but for the language barrier the learning was okay i remember to have worked late in the night taking important notes and then going back early in the morning to the plant 
but adapting to these tough Russian conditions were possible because I had an experience of adapting to a similar condition when I went from my school to college in Chennai. From a Tamil medium school and a small town and to go to College of Engineering, Gindi, where I could see a cosmopolitan environment, students from all the parts of India and even people from abroad were there. And I was finding it really difficult to communicate with them. But going back was not an option. I didn't want to quit. So what I did, being a quick learner, I picked up English fast. And then within a year, I became their representative and remained so till I left the college, interacting well with the professors and the warden, principal, students. This enthusiasm and energy kicked in and helped me survive and excel in the Russian conditions. In the Russian, the place where I was in Russia, the Russians were very cordial and they extended great hospitality. Indian cinema was very famous there. I could see many fans of Mr. Midun Chakrabarti. And believe me, they were addicts to TV serials. They took me to their schools and uh, honored me as chief guest. They did not even allow me to stand in the queue in the shops. They will ask me straight to go to the counter. For a 28-year-old boy, this was a dream come true. We came back to India on a short closed contract. We had to do some reverse engineering to fill the technology gaps. And the team was very dedicated. And under the inspiring leadership of Jnana Gandhi sir, who can be called as the father of cryogenic technology in India, and with the help of Indian industries, we entered the next realization phase. The cryo project was formed on a matrix structure where the functional level managers were also responsible as project executives. A lot of planning needed to be done with respect to materials, manpower, machinery, facility, technology, hardware realization, and so on. Everything was meticulously done. And contracts with potential Indian industries were signed. And we entered the pre-production phase, which included the tool, tool design, tryout, and engineering model realization. Then we entered the actual hardware realization. That is where we faced a lot of challenges. And that is where I feel ISRO has contributed to the growth of Indian industries. We were hand-holding the Indian industries, and we were trying to raise them to meet the toughest quality levels that were demanded by the cryogenic engine. And in the process, the uh, industries also elevated themselves to match the requirement, and they became at par with the best of industries in the world. And this way, this engine and the stage both were realized and tested successfully. And suddenly, we became, India became the sixth country in the world to have the most complicated cryo engine technology. And I, I was fortunate to be a part of that team. And parallelly, in 2003, ISRO designed a bigger cryogenic engine, which is three times more powerful than the earlier engine. And I was made the project manager for the engine hardware realization. That was the time I, I had to face a lot of tough times personally and professionally. You have to be tougher at times that are tough to you. I focused more on work, something what Dr. Kalam did many times. And this not only pulled me out of difficult times, but also helped improve the production of the hardware. This way, the bigger engine also was realized later and successfully tested. It is flying now. If you see the upcoming programs in ISRO website, the future programs, there is Gaganyaan, Chandrayaan-3, Venus mission, and other missions which are lined up. ISRO is like a shining star. The, the keys to its success or good leadership, teamwork, expertise across domains, well-built infrastructure, wide-ranging R&D, meticulous review systems, and continual improvements. With all this, sky is not the limit for ISRO. 
the unstinting hard work of team isro is always supported and encouraged by the government worldwide the space economy is expanding towards a trillion dollar economy and india is moving towards a vibrant space ecosystem involving private industries institutions and startups india is really doing well guided by our honorable prime minister and with the visionary leadership of our chairman somnath sir i am sure india will reach greater heights in space in future i have traveled more than 35 years in isro a wonderful journey I had ups and downs i worked in different areas i had the opportunity to be directly or indirectly a part of the first and subsequent missions of pslv gslv mark 3 chandrayaan and mangalyaan missions and i also was fortunate to work with great legends in the field my engineering batchmates who are spread across the world in very very high positions respect me because i worked for isro and before i close i leave with you some of the life lessons that i have learned wisdom has an upper hand over knowledge focus on work pulls you out of difficult times nothing like hard work be tougher at tough times wait for your time trust systems and relationships only after testing invest in your health put god first everything will fall in place thank you